Hey everyone, welcome to The Other Side. I am your host, TJ Schreier. We have a great show for you this week. This week we're going to talk about what is going on in the community. We will also have a special guest come on the show and get, share tips on, to have, on how to have good study habits in our College Survival Guide segment. We will also talk with a member of the drama class about the play Taking Sides. And we will see what happened last week at the Gulf Coast State College Dental Clinic as well as look into sports. With that being said, let's get started. First, we're going to see what is going on in the community. And this is our first segment, and we like to call it, What Have You Heard? So with that being said, on March 1st, the Junior League of Panama City is hosting their fourth annual murder mystery show, Mystique. And this year's theme is a fatal 50s affair. The fatal 50s begin, will begin at 6 p.m., where everyone will be able to have beverages from the cash bar while viewing the exciting lineup of silent auction items and characters from the show among them and lay the groundwork of what unfolds on stage. The play will begin at 7 p.m., followed by a fun and interactive clue hunt that commences with a closing solution scene. Live entertainment will also follow after the play. Buy your tickets now at the Martin Theater. Contact them at 763 8080 for this fun and interactive date night out. Co tickets will cost at $30 per person or two tickets for $50. For more information, visit the website www.jlpanamacity.org. On March 4th from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., the Emerald Coast Business Women's Association presents the 15th annual Death by Chocolate. And of course, everybody knows that chocolate is the best thing in the world. This year's theme is Peace, Love, and Chocolate. Come dress in your hippie attire to enter for a chance to win great prizes. The silent, there will be silent auction, music, and everyone's favorite thing to eat, dessert. Tickets are $25 in advance and $30 at the door. All this will be available at the Eye Center of North Florida Girls Inc., the Candace Bank, and the Callaway Country Floors. The event will be at the Marina Civic Center. On March 8th will be the Girl Scouts 5K One Mile Run and Walk. The Girl Scout Run precedes the start of the Girl Scout Week, beginning with the Girl Scout Sunday on March 9th and ending with Girl Scout Sabbath on Saturday, March 15th. Girl Scout Week includes the commemoration of the day in 1912 where Juliet Gordon Lowe officially registered the organization's first 18 girl members in Savannah, Georgia. Runners will check in at the Trinity Lutheran Church, which is located at 101 West 11th Street, Panama City, Florida, starting at 6.30 a.m. The entry fee for the 5K is $18, which includes a race t-shirt and the runner's choice of a box of Girl Scout cookies. The one-mile entry fee is $12 and includes a race t-shirt. For more information on this, visit the website www.girlscouts.org. Now we're going to see what clubs have going on this week. It's time for Club Connect. February the 14th marked the opening reception of the Time Inn, which was housed at the Amelia Arts Center main showroom at Gulf Coast State College. The featuring artworks came from the University of Florida's Master of Fine Arts, Chandra Debus, and Gulf Coast's very own assistant professor of visual and performing arts, Tammy Marunzi. Inspired by the artist's collaborative sketches, the bulk of the gallery consists of sculptures and paintings and a cartoon-like impressionism. Developed in the 19th century, Impressionism is characterized by short brush strokes and bright colors. In hopes of gaining new insight into the artwork, we spoke with Ms. Tammy Marunzi. We're just trying to play. Um, we were exchanging sketchbooks, and we just really wanted to see what would come out when we exchanged sketchbooks. So neither one of us had control or um, had an idea or had a concept. We just really were playing. Food and beverages were provided at the opening reception. The gallery will remain open to the public until March 21st. Now it's time to check out what's been going on in sports. Our sports anchor Brad Warnick has been very busy getting the latest in college sports. He joins us now in the studios. And Brad, what's been going on in sports? The Commodore baseball team faced Wallace Dothan. The Commodores were led by starting pitcher Cameron Ragsdale, who pitched six innings giving up only one earned run. The team had an amazing day in the batter's box with seven different kit players getting hits. Nick Flair led the team with, two, with a two-run home run in the first inning. The final score was 10-1. to 1. 
In their final regular season game, the Lady Commodores played Pensacola State College in a hard-fought game. The Lady Commodores were led by sophomore Jessica Morton with 16 points in her final home game as a Commodore. The final score was 78-66, Gulf Coast win. The Commodores played Chattahoochee Valley Community College Saturday night. The Lady Commodores were led by pitchers Haley Elliver and freshman Ashton May. The Lady Commodores bats came alive that night with seven players recording hits as sophomore Megan Griffin was three for three with two home runs and eight RBIs. The Lady Commodores won 10 to two in five innings. The men's basketball team played a very tight game Saturday night against Pensacola State College. The Commodores bench players played a vital role in the game as freshman Elliot Cole scored 20 points in 28 minutes. The final score was 76-78 overtime loss to Pensacola State College. Back to you, TJ. So Brad, can you tell me what upcoming games the college has? The men's baseball team will be home again starting March 4th when they host the Gulf Coast Spring Classic at Fraser Field. The next home game for the women's softball team will be March 7th when they host Lake Michigan in a doubleheader and then again March 9th and March 10th when they host Southeastern in a doubleheader. All right, well thank you for that, Brad. Again, that was our sports anchor Brad Warnick live in the studio. Last week, our student reporter Caleb Erskine went to the Gulf Coast State College Dental Clinic to see why there were so many kids in that place. Caleb, what'd you find out? Thanks, TJ. The Gulf Coast State College's very own dental clinic had a handful of kids from around the area come in and get a free dental checkup. I got to see it firsthand. The Gulf Coast State College Dental Clinic is giving free children's dental checkups this week. From Monday through Thursday, parents have signed up their children for a free teeth cleaning x-rays, and tooth examinations. This event serves as a great opportunity for parents and also serves as a learning opportunity for both children and the students. The children were happy to have white smiles, especially when they got free toys after a well-behaved visit. The students have been studying hard and were anxious for this event. Some of the students dressed up as a tooth fairy and decorated the waiting room with superheroes and stuffed animals to ease the more nervous children and to show that going to the dentist does not have to be bad. The event was a great success and both the students and kids have learned a lot from it. Valerie Douglas, a first year dental hygienist student, tells us her experience with this event. It's just a way for us to reach out to the community and give back. Um, that Panama is always helping us. The school is such a good facility, so this is our way of reaching out back to help the kids. Um, we don't usually get to see pedo patients throughout the semester, so this is a week that we only see kids, and it helps us see a window into that field that we don't get to see all the time. The parents are usually very grateful for all the work that we're giving for the kids because it is free for them. Each year we're just growing and getting better and better. I'm Caleb Erskine, and this has been your College Headline. The kids and students both had a lot of fun during this event, and I am sure they can't wait till next time. Now back to TJ. Well, thanks, Caleb. We really appreciate that. Now it's time for what I like to call my favorite segment of this show. It's time for the College Survival Guide. Now, most, most students like to go on the computer or the smartphone or their tablets just to find all these cool habits of, you know, how to be financially stable, how to have good study habits, how to be, you know, all that stuff. Well, here at the other side, we like to do things old school. And I was in the library the other day, and I actually found this old book that exactly says College Survival Guide, and I just happened to have it right here. Let me get this out. Look, check this out, man. It, it is, whew, it is old. This must have been here since 1957. So we're going to take a look and see, you know, what our tip is going to be this week. So let's see. No, no. Aha! Let's see. Da, da, da. All right. Our first tip this week is going to be having good study habits. And with midterms coming up and already being midway through the semester, students are trying to find multiple ways to be able to study well while also possibly having a full-time job or raising kids. Well, earlier today, we got to sit down with uh, a member of the library who is an expert on having good study habits, and let's take a look at that. Today, I'm here with Ms. Sarah Duffs, who is the collections librarian here at Gulf Coast State College, and she's come here today to give us some tips on how 
to study well and to have good steady habits here. Ms. Sarah, thank you for kindly joining us Well, today. thank you for having me. First off, I do want to start is what exactly is a collections librarian? Ah, well, a very good question. Um, I am basically in charge of all the books and ebooks and that sort of thing in the library. So I place all the orders. Uh, I do a lot of research on, you know, what can we get for you guys? What do, what are students really going to use and that kind of thing? That, that's, that seems like it's a lot to do, especially in like one day, one day, one shift day. Sure. It's pretty fun, though. <laughs> all right. Well, obviously, today, our, t our topic today is about how how to have good study habits and how to and get study tips um, and with you working in the libra library you obviously see a lot of students who have done different kinds of studying habits um, can you tell us a little bit about um, this coming the end of the semester study madness can you give us a little bit about yeah that? so study madness in case you, um, you haven't seen it before or haven't been before study madness is um, sort of an event uh, loosely defined <laughs> that student government puts on in the library and um, the library stays open late so it'll happen during finals week um, which I don't know those exact dates but uh, if you stay tuned to the library webpage as we get closer to finals we'll post times that will be open and days dates um, but we'll, we'll stay open until uh, 11 o'clock now normally we close at 9 30 so we stay open late till 11 and student government comes in uh, with some snacks um, like candy pretzels uh, Coke, uh, some energy drinks, and that sort of thing to sort of like give you that extra boost to get through your studying for finals. Now, I was, who who can be who is able to be able to use study madness? Is it just for students, or can like employees also be able to use it? Well, um, I mean, the library is open, so anyone who wants to use the library can come in, regardless if they're a student or not, um, during those hours up until eleven. Um, but student government, I believe, will only give the snacks to students. So you have to have your student ID. It has to be the new one with the A number. Um, and you just bring that with you, and then they'll hook you up. Now, with you being in the library and seeing all these students doing different ways of studying, what's been the most interesting student that you've seen that's done a like a odd study habit? Oh, gosh. There's probably been several. <laughs> you know, sometimes you see so many weird things that it becomes the new normal. Right. <laughs> um, we do have, we have a lot of whiteboards in the library, um, just like smaller ones that you can wheel around. So if you have a study group, like say you're in a physics class or a calculus class, your group can come and work on problems together on the whiteboard. But um, sometimes we'll get students that like to like, leave us little messages on the whiteboard or draw us little pictures. <laughs> so I'm not really sure that that's helping them study, <laughs> but maybe it is. Maybe it's like a stress relief. And you see, I've always gone to the library. I've seen those. Mm -hmm. And when I, if I, when I have math homework, it's like my mind wants to go to that whiteboard, but then I'm like, no, no, I'm not going to do it and all that. Oh, no, you should do it. Go for it. So obviously it's, it's a lot help. It helps them, right? Yeah, because you know that, that big whiteboard, um, you can write larger, it gives you extra space. So, you know, in some of these physics and calculus problems, you're going to need a lot of paper. <laughs> you know, if you're trying to do it, you're going to have to write a little bit smaller and you're going to have to use a lot of paper. Whereas if you have the whiteboard, you can just kind of keep going. You don't have to pause and, you know, sharpen your pencil or find more paper or whatever. You can just put it all out there. That definitely does help a lot. Um, what other uh, areas in the library that are available for students that can be helpful for them? Yeah, um, we've got a lot of space in the library. That's one thing I really like about our library is that it's it's there's a lot of open space. It's, it's fairly large. Um, so we have uh, really big tables where if you have a lot of books for your paper or for your class or a lot of papers or a lot of whatever you're trying to study, you can just spread it all out. You can take up like the entire table, just get all your stuff out there. Get like the whole college experience. Yeah. So, um, I mean, if you really want to be like the, the stereotype student, you know, when you get a stock photo and search like college student or whatever, and they just have books piled up, you can do that in our library. <laughs> you can bring all your papers and just spread it on out. That'd be one great um, Facebook profile picture <laughs> yeah yeah and people do it we see it all the time um, yeah it's you know sometimes it's helpful to just get everything out there and you don't necessarily have that kind of space at your home or at your apartment um, or on your desk or wherever so um, the library is great about that giving you some extra space and we've also got great um, group space so if you have a study group even if it's a large study group um, we've got a big group study room downstairs you don't have to be quiet I mean be courteous don't be like you know, irritating other people, but you know, it's not, we're not going to shush you or anything. 
and um, we've got extra whiteboards in that big group study room on the first floor and you can just kind of like run your own class basically and try to figure it out with each other or if you have a group project you're working on you can there's several tables back there so you can set up like little stations or what have you now what about for those students who don't like the whole study group thing and don't feel like being around any of the students because they feel like it's a distraction is yeah. there anywhere in the library that that they oh can yeah study with? um and that's another great thing about the library is you know some people need complete silence to study they don't want any distractions they just want to focus uh, and that's something that can be really hard to get at home especially if you don't live alone right. <laughs> so uh, so you can come to the library and we have um private study rooms and you can reserve them ahead of time you can book them from the library website uh, or you can walk in and just see if there's one available and then that'll be quieter it'll be just you in that room unless you want to bring a friend uh, and there are computers in there but you know you don't have to use them if you just want to read or or whatever uh, and then that sort of gives you your own space like your private space to study and you can book it for four hours at a time which is a pretty decent chunk. Yeah, and it definitely benefits those students to be able to help them because obviously it helps them do well in classes because that's what they like to do, and it definitely gives them that when they get to the, when they study in that private area, they don't feel distracted by anything. Yeah, that's the hope that it'll kind of give you like a little meditative area, <laughs> like right. just you know center yourself and focus. You just see, they're going like this the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and they've been really popular the study rooms. So. Obviously, you were once a student, so you yes. know what it's what it's once upon a time. <laughs> once upon a time, so you know what it's what it feels like to have those t days where you got all this studying to do, but yet you're trying to, you know, balance everything else out. What's been what was the best thing for you when you when you were in that position? Something, um, well, two things I will say uh, I think are very important, and the first one is. Uh, don't wait till the last minute <laughs> to do all your studying. And I was the worst about that. I was such a procrastinator as a student. It's kind of remarkable that I got through it all. Um, but that is my biggest piece of advice is don't wait until the last minute and don't try to cram it all in at once. And I know that you guys hear that all the time. Right. I know everybody tells you, don't cram. You got to study a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. But it really is true. It um, it'll means. really help you retain it if you don't wait till the last minute. <laughs> in other words, like if... if someone tells you something over billions of times that means it's it's serious and it's a really big deal yeah yeah um, so so that's the first one that's really important and then the second one is give yourself a break sometimes um, don't try to do I mean you can do eight-hour study sessions sure you know we're not gonna kick you out of the library right. <laughs> that's fine but take a break now and then because um, you're just gonna wear yourself down you're gonna burn yourself out and um, you need to you need to take care of yourself too. Get something to eat. Right. Yeah, and we do have um, for study breaks. If you are in the library, we do have magazines you can flip through if you just need to like take a break from reading for a second and just look at pictures. Yeah. Uh, you can do that, and we've got if you don't have a laptop, we have computers, so you can like hop on Facebook or whatever you kids are doing these days. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's getting to the point where it's all tweet, tweet yeah. Twitter now, or however yeah. they say it now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Another thing, um, this is not like your typical library where you go to a library and everyone's literally telling you to shh right. all the time. Well, why is that? Why is that? A, why do you guys want that? Why do you guys think it's it's important to communicate, and not be so well, quiet? Well, we think the whole shushing thing is really um, it's alienating. You know, you come into a place and like you're basically our guest at the library. Like we're here for you guys. We the whole point of the library is to serve students, right? So we don't want you guys to walk in and then we tell you, like, stop what you're doing. Right. <laughs> like, you need to change everything. Um, so we want to make it more inviting. And then um, I think the nature of a lot of schoolwork has been changing a lot, that there's a lot of group work and then there's a lot of um, classes that you really do need to help each other. You do need study groups and that kind of thing. So um, we really want to support that and support, um, you know, group study and support um you know, you asking your friend for some help and that kind of thing. Um, so, but then at the same time, there are people who really do just want quiet. So we try to have different areas available in the library to meet everybody's needs. So basically, if you know you're going to be talking, if you know you're going to, you know, you need to answer your cell phone if it rings or that kind of thing, when you come in, go downstairs to right. the first floor and you'll be fine. <laughs> but if you want the quiet, come upstairs and go, um, come in and then go upstairs to the quiet study area, especially the, um, the windows facing the student union. Mm -hmm. um, that tends to be really, really quiet. 
And if somebody talks up there, come tell us, and we will shush them. <laughs> now, say that this is kind of a question I came up with. Say that I come, I just started Gulf Coast, and I'm a mm -hmm. freshman, and I'm trying to figure out a great way to study, and I'm trying to figure out, you know, getting all these exams coming up. Besides the advice that you just gave us, what other advice could you give me to have good study habits? Well, um, if you were brand new to Gulf Coast, I would tell you, come to the library and talk to a librarian. And it can be as simple as, hey, I'm a new student here, and these are my classes, and I don't know what I'm going to need. Can you tell me, like, what are some things that I might want to take a look at? Um, because we have a wide variety of resources that um, I think students aren't always aware of unless we tell, specifically tell them, hey, use this or take a look at this. Um, for instance, we have the um, we have a bunch of databases. We have one called the Testing and Education Reference Center, and you can get to it from the library website if you click on databases and then databases A to Z. It'll give you the whole list of all our databases. But this one, Testing and Education Reference Center, has a bunch of uh, practice tests for a variety of stuff. So um, let's say you're a dual enrolled student, so you're still in high school. There are like practice SAT, ACT, um, all kinds of like college prep stuff, but then if you are, um, you know, a normal college student, um, you've already finished high school, all that, there's uh, CLEP tests, practice CLEP tests, there's, um, if you want to go into teaching, there's the Praxis, there's nursing tests, there's all kinds of tests, uh, and it'll do practice tests, um, exam prep questions, that sort of thing, um, and then, you know, we've got, like, uh, language databases, if you're in a Spanish class you need to study Spanish, we've got Mango Languages, if you're in an anatomy class and you need to study anatomy, or if you took an anatomy class but forgot everything and need to brush up, we've got a bunch of stuff for that too. So we have a wide variety of things and um, really the best thing to do is just come talk to us. All right. Well. I think that actually wraps it up. Miss Hillary, uh, Ms. not Miss <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Miss Sarah, I do want to appreciate you coming out here and giving us some helpful tips about study habits. Yeah, anytime. All right. Well, here, we're here today with the great Stephen DeVillers, who's been a member of the Drama Club for how many years? Oh, my goodness. I've been doing drama since I was a little kid, actually. So I've, I've been I've been in theater for a really long time. So how, how long have you been with uh, Gulf Coast? With Gulf Coast, um, this will be my fifth year and final year, actually. I'll be graduating in, the, in May, so. Oh, we're both May, we're both May yeah, graduates. Both All May. right. Well, today, Steven here has taken time to come to the studio and talks a little bit about, it, to us, excuse me, about their upcoming productions, and it is called Taking Sides, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, can you give us a description of, or can you explain what Taking Side is all about? Okay, well, Taking Sides takes place in 1946, I believe. It's after the um, um, uh, Adolf, after he had, uh, after his, he'd fall of power and all of that stuff. And it's the time where they're going through and weeding out and finding out who was member of the Nazi party and who was not. Um, and I've been given, I've been given a, um, a special case um, of Wilhelm Furt Wengler. He was a um, the Berlin Philharmonic's orchestra uh, conductor at the time and he was Adolf's favorite conductor at that time and he didn't get out like a bunch of the other um, musicians and uh, conductors did at the time when he came into power. So I've been given um, the order to find out if he is a member. So. Well, that's really a that's a, that seems interesting. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a, it's a his, historical moment. Yes. Uh, this is all based on true events and everything, correct? Well, it probably did happen. Um, it may have. I'm not sure if it did, but uh, Wilhelm Furt Wengler is a real person, um, and he's been he has uh, had uh, he was been uh, what was it he he had a um, interview with Hitler. Okay. Him and Hitler were behind closed doors, had a screaming argument at one point in time in history. Um, but um, I don't know about the, these, these, these actual events occurred, I'm not sure. But he was chased after for being in the party. So. Well, that's really interesting. So can you give us a description about your character in this play? Okay, well, my character is Major Steve Arnold. And he's an older gentleman because he was um, he was in the war, 
Uh, but before the war, he was a, a, in insurance. He was a claims assessor. And um, he got into the war, and he was, he was in it. He was there at the camps. He saw, he saw all the stuff go down. He's, he was there. Um, so he knows about all the stuff. Um, and then after the war was over, uh, they called him up to be an investigating officer because this is what he was meant to do. Uh, he, was, he was trained to um, investigate people for stuff like that because he was in insurance, so he, he knows all about that. And um, he's, he's very, very passionate about um, the truth and reality and how, how horrible the camps were and everything. Um, and he's really, really, really um, on to Wilhelm, and he's really wanting to nail him. He was a very determined person. Very to determined to find out that he was he was a member of the party, or if he was. Oh, hey, we'll find mystery. out. Mystery. Mystery. It's very mystery. <laughs> I like that. So, in my in my experience, I've seen people like directors and all these people mm -hmm. have reasons behind why they chose to do this production or why they chose to make this movie or something. Mm -hmm. So your director is? Uh, Rusty Garner. Actually. Rusty Garner. Why didn't Mr. Garner choose this? <sighs> um, I think he chose the play because it's hard. It is a hard play. Um, and also it is very, uh, Rusty likes uh, historical things. And this is very, very historically rich. And he lo he also loves um, in anything that involves with uh, music, like any musical history. Because uh, last, the last thing he um, directed himself was Amadeus, which was a couple of uh, years ago, last year or two years ago, which was about Mozart and that whole um, historical thing about Mozart, which was very powerful, too, about music and how, how the power of music does something to people. And uh, that also is um, evident in this play as well. Um, that's one of big. That's the biggest thing that Wilhelm Furt Wengler is is sticking to. He he'll tell you that um, the reason he stayed in the country was because uh, he wanted to 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 show people that there's there's hope through music and art and stuff like that. So what's it what's it been like working with uh, director Garner? Uh, <laughs> It's been interesting because this is the first play I've worked with him on. I've worked with Jason and Rosie on a countless of stuff, um, but this is the first time I've been directed by Rusty. Um, he, he's very, um, very interesting to work with. Uh, he he has this vision, and he he'll, he wants to get it right. Right. And um, he he has a good way of for, uh, telling us how he wants. He wants to get it through, and and he'll come up with these ideas and stuff that we well, we've never thought of as actors as we've gone through looking through our parts and stuff. And he'll just it'll be eye opening to us that we've never thought of that before. Stuff like that. So, what what is a typical rehearsal like? So we show up um, a little bit before because rehearsals start at six thirty. So we show up a little earlier before that, um, and we get into, um, before we get our actual everything, costumes and everything, we've got most of our set. Our set is usually put up as soon as it can be, so we can rehearse on the uh, set and with our props and everything that we need. Um, so we'll show up, and we'll get our pieces of our costumes on that we will use. Um, to get used to working in that material so we won't be fumbling on our shoes when we're walking across the stage. Right, of course. Um, <clears throat> so we get ready. Um, we have our warm-ups, and uh, we do a fight call, which is um, it's a, if there's any, like, any physical like movement where it's a possibility that someone could get hurt in the play, we run that as a fight call. And fight call is... Uh, Fighting on stage <laughs> is like is like dancing. I've heard you've got to you got to make sure everything's precise. Everything's at the at the same. You have to do everything the same every time. It's got to be it's got to be the same every time, or someone can get hurt in the moment. Which is why we run fight call before the show each time we run the show, so it's safe for everybody, all the actors involved. So after we do that, then we get ready to run the show. 
then we go through the show. We run the show, and after we're done with the show, uh, well, halfway through it, we take our break, and then we come back, run the rest of the show, and then after we're done, we take off our uh, take off uh, the costume stuff um, and go down and get notes from the director of if this is what I want you to do on this part. Um, I need more of this. Hey, speak up. You're not talking clearly. Um, stuff like that. Uh, after that, and then we go home. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I bet. Finally. <laughs> So uh, it sounds like it's an intense practice. So you must be yeah. relieved when you finally get to get done and get to go home and relax a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rehearsal is very intense <laughs> sometimes. Sounds like it's more intense than studying for a final exam, actually. Yeah, that's true. I'm true. So what is it like the week of the show? Okay. Uh, we call that the dark week. Oh. Uh, it's, 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 it's very dark. It's very uh, – it's tech week. It's very stressful. It's a very stressful week is more of the better word to say, it's stressful. Um, we could, we, we, we'd, we would start uh, rehearsal at regular time, I believe, or we do 30 minutes before. Um, tech week is when everything falls into place. Uh, we have our costumes, we have the lights, we have cues of the lights and stuff like that. And cues are basically when an actor says uh, a certain line and the lights need to be changed, the stage manager needs to know that um, know when to say go, because that's that's our big word during the show is go, yeah. um, and lights will go and stuff like that will happen. Uh, so during tech week, that is the that's the time for the tech to do their rehearsal because it's been uh, up to then it's been all about the actors rehearsing. Now it's time for the tech to rehearse their part. So for actors. All of us actors, we all feel the same way, uh, and, and, and it's said that the director says this to us as well, that it feels like we're just sitting on stage and nothing's happening. But there's so much happening in, in, in backstage. There's um, people, on, on, people on headset, and hey, we need this, but we're, we're going to get skewed, da, 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 we're going to go back, and da, 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 da. so much going on in the headset. But to us, as the actors, we're just sitting there. There's nothing going on. But um, it's kind of a hurry up and wait kind of thing and for the tech we need to be ready for them um, like we could be already off stage and they need to skip four four pages ahead and they're like all right we need to skip to this page and you're like oh well I was getting I was gonna <laughs> drink well, like well I need to get on stage so it's it's very it's a very stressful week and then we go for a long time at night we could go for long periods of time at night so everybody goes home very tired and that whole week is just very stressful and tiring for everyone but in the end it's all worth it and it all final. comes out yeah so explain the costumes okay costumes uh depending on how how dated the piece is um we may rent costumes from a costume company that we have um somewhere else um but uh in this case there's stuff that we can find here like at goodwills and stuff like that but it's it's been a little easier for us to find stuff like that for this show. Now, what day? When is the first? What are the times and dates for these? Okay, it opens <laughs> 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 next week, <laughs> the twenty-first. Okay. Um, um, the Fridays and Saturdays are at seven thirty, and Sundays are at two thirty. It runs next weekend and the weekend after next. So. So two full weekends. Two full weekends, yes. All right. Well, you guys heard that. Next Saturday, next Friday is the first uh, performance of Taking Sides, starting at 7.30. Mm -hmm. And it's going to go, for, it lasts for how long? Uh, I don't know how long it is. We haven't really got the time of it, but I'm going to say it's around maybe, <laughs> uh, maybe right at two hours, I don't know, or less than that maybe I'm and it's sure. for mature audiences mature all. audiences it does have some language in it and right. the content's pretty heavy for maybe younger audiences to understand so right. so guys you heard that next friday will be the opening of taking sides right here at the amelia center at gulf coast state college starting at 7 30 and steven devillers we really appreciate you taking time coming up here and no having some time for us mm -hmm. thank you very much thank you